So today's project is kind of interesting. Um, the makers of Soft Stall have come up with a new cover, a cover that's even better than their last cover, which goes over that, you know, um, kind of like inch foam. It's better than the old one. The old one was um, a very strong, almost like a geotextile mat that had a rubber coating on the top. And what they found is, I think, after like 10 or 15 years, they could they could get, um, the horses could wear through the top coating and get some moisture between it and the foam. So now they've come out with even a better stall mat. Um, I'll show you that um, as I arrived here. I'm going to take this new mat and put it in one of my stalls. It takes pretty heavy abuse from one of my bigger Percherons and give it a try. Um, I'm not 100% sure um, that I have any water damage yet in the stall that I've got the old one in, but I do know that I need to kind of touch up a couple things on it. I know it's stretched a little bit, so it's going to be really interesting to get into this stall, get it cleaned out, um, and get a look at that foam and see how well it's done over the years, especially with that big of a beast on it often. And then, like I said, I'd like to get this new one in place, and uh, we'll see how it holds up compared to the others. And if it does like I think, the others are all going to get replaced too. So this is pretty fantastic. So again, um, shout out to John over there at Soft Stalls. We'll get this going. I plan on putting this in, um, give you a review once we get it in too. And then um, hopefully in a few years, I'll be giving you a fantastic follow-up. I really like this stuff, though, in general. My old stuff stall has been doing great, as far as, like I said, I can tell. And I really like the fact that it beds well. It's softer on the horses. Um, as many of you know, um, as a veterinarian, I really don't care always for the um, idea of just stalling horses for hours on end. So if you are going to stall them, give them something decent to stand on, folks. Well, anyways, it's a nice day out here. We're doing it at about 30 degrees. It's about as warm a weather as I think I'm going to get to be able to get this done. But we're going to give it a shot today. I'll follow along. We'll see how we do. So first things first, uh, I got to get this thing unpacked. Um, it comes pretty flat on a pallet. comes with the edging material on it um, right from soft stall. And it comes folded up. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember my older videos when I put this in, but the previous product came on like a massive roll 12 feet long. Getting it this way is totally better. Oh, I appreciate how John shipped it this time. This is this is absolutely fantastic. You can pick it up with a pallet fork. You can uh, move it around. It's definitely the way to go. It's very thick, like rubberized material with like a, an inner, um, I don't know what you want to call it, like belting of fabric to help hold it together. And it looks really, really um, waterproof on both sides all the way through. It's... um. It's very heavy too. So in the stall, I um, kind of want to show you where I'm at with things. This front piece on this particular stall is giving me the most headache. Um, you know, 1,500 pound horses hitting it with their hooves and their feet. It, it's kind of giving way a little, not on the edges on the side and it's nice and soft yet. It's still firm, but you know, it's been stretched out and stuff by the horses. So the, one of the first things I've got to do is just get it cleaned up. I've got to get all the shavings out of here, and I'm probably going to reuse a bunch of these shavings because they're still clean. I'm, I'm not going to waste. For the sake of, like I said, this upgrade, what's going to happen, though, is we're going to take this old top off. We're going to take off all the um, plastic on the edges, and then we're going to put the new piece in and then um, put the plastic back. And this is barring that, you know, we don't have problems underneath it. But again, this has been in place for quite some time. It gets beaten on daily <laughs> and uh it does it does well now we don't typically stall our horses you know 12 to 16 hours in the stalls i, I don't believe that's the healthiest for them so for us they're in for several hours but they're not in that long so you can see some wet spots on the floor from when we just kicked them out and here's this front piece i just kind of want to show you if i lift it up i can't do that on any of the other ones because it's attached down but here they've broken it free from the metal and from the concrete. So I'd like to get that fixed as long as I'm I'm going in here to do this. So this is where we stand. You can see a couple wet spots from where Toby has urinated um, just today. And we're going to see what that's like underneath. So the first thing, obviously, is uh, taking out all the screws and uh, getting this, this wood piece here in front reattached down. My game plan here is 
to drill a little deeper into the concrete, um, put some liquid nails on down, and then uh, get it refastened back down. And hopefully it'll hold up. Uh, the other stalls have all held up well. This is the only one that's come free. So again, if we're going to take it apart to fix this, I might as well put this really cool um, liner back on top of it. I think that's going to work out really, really well. So once I got it apart here, as you can see, there's the piece of wood. I can see the, the foam underneath it. Um, it actually looks really good, so I'm really pleased. It looks dry. Um, it's hard for me to show here one-handed on the camera and lift this thing back up because it's so thick. Um, a little bit of hay is no big deal. So now I'll turn my attention to the sides. Um, my bride and I are in here. Again, she's wearing mittens because it's only about 30 some degrees out. Uh, so it's a little chilly. So we're going to pop out all these um, screws and then this plastic piece comes out and then the original floor will come up. This original material is kind of like got like a like a felt back to it and on the top it's rubberized and in the middle it feels like a geotextile fabric and I think what's what's happened over time to some people is the horses have worn through that rubber coating and then that's given them some trouble so that's why the company has made it even better and more impervious to the horses the other thing is is geotextile fabric you know stretches a little bit I have had absolutely no problem with the stretch you can see the wrinkles here by my legs not a big deal to me, 1,500 pound horses and a little bit of stretch, no big deal. I've had no rips and no tears. As far as I know, there isn't any leaking going on, but again, we're gonna find out here in a minute when we get this up. The project itself, uh, taking it apart, cleaning it out, probably took an hour and a half. Putting it back in, oh, I'd say took about another hour, so we were probably able to do the stall in less than two hours. I think they went pretty good. So here, she's just peeling off that plastic, Again, it's, it's just stuck to the wall, even though we've pulled the screws just because of all the years of use. But there it is. It just pops off, and uh, it looks good underneath. You can see the actual color. It used to be much more black. It, it's definitely faded out um, due to the skylights and so forth in the barn. Peeling it back here, taking a look at it, really pleased. No signs of watermarks on the inside of this. The foam is in excellent shape. It's not crushed down. It's not matted. It's not potholed. It's it's really nice. Um, I'm I'm really impressed. It's time to roll out this big beast. Um, get it blown off. Um, we got some dust on it from shipping and stuff. This thing is flipping heavy. I thought the old ones were kind of awkward to work with because they came in a roll, 12 feet long, not really rolled or you know folded up. This thing does come folded up, but it's thick and it's heavy. The part I'm looking at right now is the seam. I'm just kind of inspecting how they put it together. It's got like a six inch overlapped seam in the middle of it. And I decided to run that kind of the long way in my stall. You can run it any way you want. It looks like it's been heavily bonded or, or put together there. And it looks really nice and strong and tough. Now, obviously I'd prefer a one piece sheet, but maybe that's not doable. So regardless, I'm going to put this in and, you know, hopefully in, a year or so I'll be giving you an update that it's doing absolutely fantastic but what a heavy sucker to move around this is not a two-person lift unless you're two very very strong guys so it took four of us we got it in the stall you can see there's extra in all the corners um, so that we can get it in place and you know we we stretched it out the best we could and then we started with one wall and kind of worked our way around and as you actually put the plastic trim up with the screws it, it kind of pulls itself even tighter. I don't know if it's like, you know, fiddle string tight, but it's definitely tight enough to um, pull a lot of the wrinkles and stuff out of it. It'll be interesting to see if this rubber stretches like the, the previous stuff did. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up um, the edge of the plastic with where I want it. My kids are helping keep it down. Basically, I'm actually going to reuse these screws. They're in such good shape. And I'm just going around and plugging the screws back in and tightening this thing right back up to the wall. Now, you'll see there's a little bit of material above it on this edge. And on the other edges, there's as much as six to eight inches above it. That's just extra material. I plan on cutting that off all at the end. I don't, I don't think that's going to be any issue whatsoever. So right now, it's all about just kind of holding it in place and getting it screwed back to the wall. It was marked as to which side was the top and the bottom, but honestly looking at it, 
I'm not sure it would make a difference because the material is so strong on both ends. Um, as far as cutting the material, I, I chose to use very sharp um, utility knives. Scissors didn't cut it. It's just, it's too thick. It's too bulky. So that's what I ended up going with. Um, screws, I'm screwing into um, two by four uh, uh, slotted pine. Um, so what I choose is an inch and a half long um, small spack screw. I think it's got a quarter head on it. And obviously it's got the star drive on it so I can go pretty quick. These screws, like I said, are from the setup when I took it apart. I'm actually reusing them, even though I did buy a whole set in case I needed it for this. But they're in such good shape, there's no reason why not to use them, really, folks. I mean, it's 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 really nice how, how it's coming together, if you know what I mean. Once I got this done, um, trim it, and... Um, Basically, then it's it's ready to go. It, it, it went in pretty nice. I'd say the hardest part was picking it up and hauling it in. Probably the worst part was taking the shavings out and dealing with, with the dusting and the sweeping and stuff. Overall, it, it really went well. If this works really good in this stall in the next few months and it looks like it's holding up as good as the other one did, if not even better, which I expect it to, dang nabbit, the other ones are going to get an upgrade too. That's just the way it is. So here I'm cutting the edges. I'm just kind of trying to get things trimmed, walking around here on my knees and just getting everything lined up and made to look nice. It's just me. I know it's a horse stall. I understand it's going to get shavings on it and poop and pee, but I just like it to look nice. So it's a little bit of a tough material to cut. Um, it's, it's not like you can just, you know, rip across it. But what I'm doing is I'm putting a utility knife on the top of the plastic edge. And yes, I'm putting probably a little line in that pine wood, but I'm cutting across the top of it the absolute best I can. Um, and it, it should work well. And remember, the floor underneath here is concrete, just like it would be in a veterinary hospital. And it's a heated floor. So it's a heated floor on concrete, uh, the heating system is. And then we've got the soft stall that, you know, I don't know what it is, two inches of, you know, foam, and now this new um, impervious uh, rubber matting on the top, which is an upgrade from what you could get six to eight years ago. So this is this is pretty cool. So as you can see, I'm just kind of working my way along. It's, it's a struggle to cut this material. It, it's got like um, fabric embedded in it to give it strength, probably to stop it from stretching. Um, so it, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of work to get to get this stuff cut, but it's nothing I I can't handle. It just takes time. So here again, I'm just cutting big pieces off and getting them out of my way. Um, it's just what what it is. If you want to check out the website on soft stall on this, um, feel free. Uh, if you'd like to try this in your place, highly recommend you talk to John. He can get you the right size. Um, I've got a stall that's a 10 by 12. I've also got these two stalls, which are 12 by 12. And then I got one next to it that's about 11 by 12, just because of how the tack room went in it. So with that being the case, these guys will work with you. Just, just reach out to them. Um, John is wonderful to work with uh, emailing and stuff. He's got a good staff as far as getting it shipped out and stuff. I think it came out of Canada. Um, but either way, it, it ended up great. Here's the front entrance after I got it all down. It's now been uh, reattached to the concrete and it's glued down. It's all in place. Uh, I got it as tight as I could. Maybe not perfect, but really nice, folks. So now it's literally ready for shavings. A lot of people in the hospital world do not put shavings in, but I find shavings over the top of this is fantastic because it absorbs the urine and you do not have to use a lot. Um, Two bags would be plenty for this thing and probably last me at least a week to 10 days. And, you know, that's that's all you need. Just enough shavings to get that urine soaked up so that you can get it off the mat. Otherwise, it just puddles. It doesn't know where to go. So I still recommend using a bedding on top of this. You guys can do what you like. I personally like the uh, really fine shavings because it's easier for me to sift out the, the poop balls and the fine shavings kind of make like a chunk when the urine's on it. And I like that. I know some people have thicker shavings and they're fine with that too. I think they would all be fine on this. This material is really tough. They're going to step on wood chips 
if that's your shaving type and they're not going to punch it through this stuff. This stuff is thick and it's hard. It feels like you're working with a dang tire. But either way, um, time to bring in the shavings and get a couple bags in here and uh, get it spread out. Again, I, I don't put it very heavy. You can see those plastic strips are probably only about an, an inch to maybe inch and a half tall there on the on the edges. We're not even gonna we're not even gonna be up to those by the time I bed this stall in. That's that's the way I like it. It's worked. Um, we don't go through a lot of shavings with our draft horses this way. Again, they're comfortable on this, uh, and I think I think that's that's the way to go. The one thing nice about our barn doesn't smell like urine either, because these shavings you clean out the stall, you throw them out. Doesn't smell like poop and urine. It never gets into the bedding. It never gets into the concrete. It never gets down to the earth to to need that you know ammonia type products to get it off. So. I'm I'm really pleased with that. Um, I think I think anybody that uses a stall system like this and cleans it out proper, I think they'll see a reduction in in smell. Especially since I come from stalls that were on earth. Um, I used to I used to have some that were you know sand um, and a light gravel mix. I've had some that are hard packed clay. Eventually, the urine just gets in there and the odors come, especially when it gets humid in the summer. We're in Minnesota. So humidity in the summer is pretty high up here. In the winter, certainly it's not an issue, but in the summer it is. I would imagine some of the southern states have kind of the same same issue with that. So again, I've almost got this stalled up, um, and we're just about ready to get to get the uh, the horses in here and get them back on this for the night um, for a couple hours. I think they'll really like it. Um, it just it looks great. Looks like a fantastic upgrade, folks. I'm real pleased on it. Like I said, um, kudos to John out there at Soft Stall. This is going to be uh, really nice, and uh, I'm going to be doing probably some more stalls here in the next few months. So this is it. This is finished product before the horses come in. Got a little bit of shavings on top. Time to bring in the big Toby man. My bride here will grab him, bring him in. He's all of 1,500 pounds. He steps in with ease on this thing. Not even hardly denting it. I love it. I love it. This is what I want to see. This is what makes it nice on your horses. They can be on nice footing like this. Um, you know, it's Minnesota right now. The ground is frozen like a rock. It's like an ice cube. So if I'm going to bring them in and force them to stand in one location, I want it to be nice for them. Yes, Toby's a little fuzzy right now. I do it natural style. Um, no, he doesn't have shoes on because if I did, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to get them uh, sealed up on the bottom or they'd become ice balls. So I'm not doing that. So right now he's he's playing Jane on this in the stall. And you can see he's he's hardly denting this a bit. This is a fantastic product, folks. Check it out. Soft stalls. Give John a call. I think he can set you up just like he did me. Thanks.